there's a lot of talk among those who are opposed to Bitcoin about the fact that it has irreversible transactions and how that is a major weakness of the system, irreversible transactions. And I thought that was really, really interesting. And the reason it's interesting is because it shows a fundamental misunderstanding of what we're doing here and what this technology is really about. Because irreversible transactions, to point that out as a problem in Bitcoin is to take one of Bitcoin's biggest strengths and to, and to think it's a weakness. Because you know, one of the funny things that happens with Bitcoin is that it gives us a hard core of trust, the decentralized trust model. And that trust is hard. And from that hard core of trust, you can extend and create guarantees. Guarantees of performance, verifiability, um, security, and in the case of transactions, irreversibility. Irreversibility is a feature that derives directly from the hard core of trust. And if you think about it as programmable money, then you realize from this hard core of trust, you can then add layers of innovation that soften that guarantee if you want. So as a, as a developer, I think of that, I look at that technology, and I think, well, you know, actually making reversible transactions in Bitcoin isn't difficult. You can simulate it very, very easily. So let me give you a simple example. You could use a, a multi-sig transaction between a buyer and a seller, and then have that transaction pre-sign a payment to the seller with an end lock time delayed guarantee. So you do automated escrow. Money goes into escrow for 30 days, 14 days. What do, what do credit cards do as chargeback? Pick a number, right? You can do a delayed transaction. Now the vendor knows, the seller knows that 30 days after they have a pre-signed, guaranteed, verified transaction with an end lock time that can verify it independently. That means that you have the money, and in 30 days it will be theirs. But if something goes wrong with the transaction, you can use a third-party arbitration escrow agent who's holding the third key to dispute that transaction issue a countervailing transaction that double spends the inputs and refund the buyer because the product wasn't delivered the product was faulty so with just a combination of two of the most common technologies uh, in bitcoin and the use of a third party escrow i've taken the hard core promise trust of irreversible transactions and i've softened it programmatically and created a fully reversible automated escrow chargeback capability that offers consumer protection as a software service. Better yet, in this model, the market for arbitration is open to everyone, not just Visa. So you don't have, for example, if you're on the Visa network, you have to do Visa rules for escrow and chargeback and arbitration. If you're on the PayPal network, you have to use PayPal's rules. But on the Bitcoin network, you can pick your own arbitration provider. So now we have programmatically simulated consumer protection with a brand new open market for arbitration services. Plus, I still have the underlying guarantee that in 30 days that lock time transaction will execute and will be verified unless there is a countervailing spend. So I took irreversible transactions to core, softened it and created reversible transactions. Guess what banks can't do? They can't simulate an irreversible transaction. You can't take a soft and fuzzy infrastructure full of counterparty risk and intermediaries and simulate hard trust. They can't do irreversible. But if you start with irreversible, programming a soft simulated reversible transaction is easy. It's just a matter of adding a layer. So see how what they see as a flaw is actually a great strength, because we're taking a fundamental feature of hard trust, and then we're programming different layers around it. The same thing applies to counterparty and institutional trust. Institutional money is built around a soft layer full of counterparty risks. It can't innovate fast. It can't deliver trusted services. It can't deliver hard, trusted models. 
and it can't change. The reason it can't change is because in order to change institutional money, you have to orchestrate all of the different layers. It's not just the Visa API, but every single counterparty and intermediary that's in there. The network itself has all the intelligence in the center. Bitcoin is the exact opposite. It offers a very simple, primitive core, which has a hard trust model. And then all of the intelligence is pushed to the edge, allowing innovators like the people in this room to create innovation without permission, to add innovation layers at the edge, to implement applications, services, products, financial instruments that redefine the trust model. And to do so, they don't have to ask for anyone's permission. Write and deploy. And that is the fundamental difference between programmable money and institutional money. It still strikes me as highly ironic how the people who criticize Bitcoin for some of its greatest strengths have not figured out yet that there is no way in the world they could even begin to simulate these strengths. And yet we can simulate their mushiness all day long, right? In software. Easy peasy. We can implement the things. And they criticize Bitcoin for exhibiting the characteristics of a toddler currency, which is exactly what Bitcoin is. It's only five years old. And already we're reinventing financial services that took hundreds of years to build on the counterparty model. And we're moving faster and faster as this pace is accelerating. <laughs>